Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. I published a video a couple of weeks ago about making a slitting saw arbor to use in the Proxon mill. There was some interesting discussion in the comments about the video, with some recommendations about how I could improve the tool. Mark Hamagio pointed out that I could streamline the tool by making a counterbore for the head of the screw without compromising the strength and clamping force. Pennycook2 posted a link to a video Stefan Gottesfinter had made about slitting saw arbors, which was full of design ideas and improvements. Some of these improvements could be retrofitted to the tool I've already made, so I've created this video to show how I improved it and how that worked out. The first improvement I chose to make is to make the counterbore for the cap screw. This makes it possible to get much closer to some setups as it reduces the height of the tool by several millimetres. It's possible because the counterbore diameter is much smaller than the diameter of the main shaft of the arbor. You can see in this translucent view that the 10mm counterbore required for the M6 cap screw leaves plenty of material in the 16mm shaft to stay rigid while delivering the clamping force. It was easy enough to set up the part to drill the counterbore as the exact diameter and concentricity aren't critical. The 10mm drill leaves half a millimetre of clearance for the screw cap. I used this counterbore cutter to ensure the shoulder at the bottom of the counterbore was level. This helps prevent the screw from exerting any side force as it's tightened. The next improvement was one taken from Stefan's video. For his design, he added a relief to the inner parts of the cl both clamping faces. This ensures that only the outer parts of the surfaces are clamping the saw, which makes the saw more stable. It ensures that there isn't any distortion of the saw due to imperfections closer to the shaft, and increases the pressure closer to the outer diameter by redistributing the clamping force. Setting up the end cap to add the relief proved quite difficult. I originally machined all these surfaces before parting off from a larger piece of stock, so rechucking the part required me to deal with much smaller holding area and no easy way to ensure the part was true. I ended up chucking the part without any reference and then using an indicator to true up the face. I cut the relief to a depth of 0.2mm. The body of the tool was much easier to rechuck and the surface to relieve was much more accessible. I cut the relief to the same depth of 0.2mm on this side. The two parts still fit fine, but there's no obvious difference. The end result is a sleeker, better looking tool that should be easier to use and cut better. I'm planning to use it in a couple of upcoming projects, so check back for videos of the tool in use. <laughs> 